It's the 16th of June 2024, a relatively good day here in rural Ireland. The temperature this morning at 4 o'clock was 9 degrees centigrade. I'll tell you, in other places it's very hot. But in any event, um, I just want to deal with the electricity grid. Grid. This is one of the biggest issues there are in modern times because there's a whole cohort of people who vote, who are making policy, who believe that the electrical grid work, can be made work one way when there's a whole cohort like myself that says it can't and that we're stuck badly with a fossil fuel based electricity grid, whether we like it or whether we not, or whether we don't. And it's like life. Nobody wants to grow old. Nobody wants to eventually die. But it's inevitable. And you can't get them to accept this. But anyway, I want to describe the electricity grid to you folks. Now, the first thing is I'm going to pick an idealised model. And the best place to pick that is Ireland. Because although there is a little interconnection in Ireland with Britain, it's not much. Now, in science, they use an idealised model, and that's the same in economics and finance and all that. They pick a, 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 a unit like the Isle of Man. Now, the thing about it is I would like to use Iceland as well. The problem is Iceland has vast amounts of geothermal electricity. Effectively, they, 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 they can tap it directly out of the ground under pressure to drive the turbines, or they can bring it in the hot steam from the geothermal, run it through a heat exchanger, boil water in a separate tank, and run the generators. So they have unbelievable amounts of it. It's everywhere. But that's all they can make. They have land that's useless. It's like if you if you buy a Cadbury's Crunchy Bar and break it. It's yellow underneath. It's a honeycomb thing underneath. And it's like that. It'll grow a bit of grass. It'll grow a few potatoes, but ah, they haven't good cattle. It's not the same as Ireland at all. And so uh, they have the geothermal, they have fish, and they live quite well in that. But in any event, there's not much variety in the country. There's not much interest in it, not much life in it either. A lot. But, but the thing about it is in Ireland, we have our grid. Now, the first and most important thing, and I do not intend to go on long or procrastinate about this, is to remember that the electricity grid is a machine. It's a machine. So if you take this sheet of paper as being Ireland, I can, I suppose I'll have to draw a bit of Ireland. No prizes for the art. But it has generators. Now, it's a machine. It's the same as a lawnmower. It's the same as a tractor, a car, a washing machine or anything else. It's a machine. Its purpose is to, or was, to generate electric electricity in dedicated power stations, houses, which could use big, heavy, awkward equipment, burn coal and do all that, and have them on a site maybe of 10 acres, and then supply electricity from that using uh, transformers and wires all over the country. Nobody has come anywhere near Nicola Tesla's idea that you can transmit power without wires. I say that's poppycock. He was wrong in that. Any event, that's what we do. So this, when this is running there right now, that is a machine. There are generators all over, and it's a machine. It doesn't matter what the operators think or do or anything else. Their job is to keep the lights on. Now, the other thing about it is, is the power is needed 24-7 without exception. If you start having blackouts in an economy like Ireland, you're declassified in the books of the investors as non-industrial. There is parts of the world where they only put on electricity a few hours a day. We want it 24-7, and that's the big problem. The other thing is there's no cor the only thing that's correlated to is power generated by nuclear or power generated by fossil fuel. Now, where did the pot is fossil fuel? It's a stored form of energy. Years ago, there was terrible heat. There was scorching heat. There was evaporation. There was coal. There was geotechnology. There was tectonic plates. All of this happened with no people around at all, with the result that vast amounts of fuel became stored in the Earth's crust vast amount, most of it on the ground where it's protected. If it had to be on top of the ground, probably humans would be extracting it years and years ago. I mean, coal only became commonly used over 200 years ago. They didn't realise if we were walking over in the desert where all the Bibles are written, 
uh, they didn't realize the ground underneath them was loaded with oil and so so prophets were running around talking and all this and they didn't realize they were walking on, on oil either so the the point is and coal too and turf and gas and all that irish exploited their peat now the, the thing is that all happened in a weather situation but it didn't matter if five years went by and there was no fuel produced it didn't matter the next five years there would be and then as you're talking about millions of years by the time it got we got able to use it in about 1855 well there was plenty of it there to extract and use as you want fuel is a form of stored energy and it's firm it can be used when you want and it's very controllable so i hope you have that now the next thing is that uh, the cat is over there taking a bit of a bit of a nap and uh, the, the next thing is that uh, 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 that that's the fuel now that is in our a machine now what is being proposed is that you can take out the fuel and put in windmills and solar farms so in other words instead of having a a, a 10 acre site down on the shannon with coal loading facilities and all that uh, you have hundreds and hundreds of acres thousands of acres in Ireland covered by windmills so you expand the area a lot that you draw the power from and then you have the best of land being covered with solar farms and there's no test being done to see if the benefit of that land producing agricultural product would outweigh the benefit of producing electricity the South Koreans have finally agreed to take Irish meat and Irish beef. So that what, why aren't we producing it for them? What's this bit of electricity going to do that we produce from these solar farms up on Meath? Acres and acres of them. You can see them from the airplanes. What, what, what a job. Anyway, the point about it is, the first thing you've got to understand, if you had a wind turbine in every field in Ireland, 250 foot high sorry 250 meters high if you had every field you know the spire of dublin i'm sure most people know it a small wind turbine today has the hub at the height of the spire of dublin if you had one in every field now we'll emit small wee fields but normal fields and you had the rest of the ground covered completely with solar panels if you had all that you now have all your land gone with solar panels. Mountains, good, bad, every land. The only land that's not covered is that with roads and houses or very difficult places to access. And you have every big field, every big field has a wind farm, a wind, a 200, 126 meter high hub height windmill and even bigger. And some of them are 300 and up there. So you have huge wind turbines everywhere in Ireland. In 10 years time no more agriculture no more forestry all gone on the windmills and the solar farms you cannot even light a bulb from all of those unless you have fossil fuel running you can't even light a bulb you cannot let them go around they need electricity they'll be damaged if they run without electricity for a short time and that electricity comes from coal oil and gas so there's the first thing these wind turbines i have claimed are net consumers of electricity but they certainly consume it on cam days you can hear the motors running and the lights on and all of that okay so that's the first thing but even if the wind blows and you have a good stiff sunny day nice breeze in the summer the solar is working well and the and the wind farms are producing you can't even light a bulb. You couldn't take a smoothing iron and, 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 and use it. You couldn't charge that mobile phone. Couldn't. Couldn't charge my laptop. You couldn't operate this bulb. I have a bulb here, a light just for the studio. You couldn't buy the kettle. The grid cannot work on it. It, it cannot be used. You cannot use raw wind or solar power. Can't be used. And that fact has escaped the governments in Germany, in Italy, in the United Kingdom, where Ken Starmer is looking for power and he's going to build more. 
The Biden administration, it didn't fool Trump, but it fooled the Biden administration. Lucinda Hurden was in power in New Zealand, fooled her and she had to be got out. She was doing so much of it that they're all leaving New Zealand. You can Google it yourself. They have to flee. There's nothing left. They're hungry in it. After four, a few years of that one running the show. And she can bodily off and go and have her children or whatever she wants to do and no remarks passed. In Ireland, we have the highest electricity prices in the world. Now, up to what I've told you, I can guarantee you that's correct. If you don't believe me, well, you should make it your business to believe me. You cannot, no island ever run on wind energy. Now, what you're going to, what happens when that's put to them, they admit it. But it took 10 years to get them to admit it. 10 years. Oh, well, now we have a new idea. Oh, batteries. Oh, battery storage. And this is because these airheads just want some way to show that it works. So if you have no fossil fuel and you have all that uh, equipment I'm telling you about, wind and solar, now you have to come along and you realise you're in the dark and we're waiting. So government holds a meeting and they're going to bring in huge amounts of battery storage. And they spend everything there is in the country and build no children's hospital or build nothing. And they install the battery storage and the batteries, the windmills charge up the batteries on a Sunday. They keep charging it on Monday. None of the power can still be used until the wind is turned off and the solar is turned off. Then you possibly might use the battery storage through inverters, which are hugely inefficient, to convert it to alternating current, three-phase current. A huge job. But even at that, no one ever tried to see it will work. I know of nowhere where batteries run even a basic washing machine. I know of nowhere where batteries have been tested to see would they run a house and maybe a farm or something else. There is absolutely no testing done to see how it works on a model scheme. And you would think that France or Germany would put a bit of money aside or the EU would say to, we'll say, Holland or maybe, maybe Poland, right, sit up there and test that out. They don't do it. They don't do it. They know damn well it's a scam. It's a scam. They must know. Why will they not do a, a, a prototype? Surely every car that was ever made, there was a prototype made. Even Tresham mills, they made a prototype. It would be very easy to build battery storage in, in we'll say, on the Iron Islands or Tory Islands or what, and see how it goes. But they won't do it because when the wind blew for two days, there's no power. Then you come along on Tuesday and you run your batteries, even if you could run your grid, and it's very big if. Within a few hours, the batteries are gone. So when there's a bit of calm and a bit of dark, you, the batteries would run out. All the batteries would do is to carry a little bit of the power over from the daytime to the night. And in our seven months of winter in Ireland, it's mostly night, it's mostly over cast. There's a not some, some sunny day. When you count the fossil fuel it took to make all those panels and those windmills, you'd be 70,000 years recovering the, 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 the material, the, the, the CO2 and the other emissions from fuel, making the cement and everything else. This is how ludicrous this whole situation is. I hope I'm getting that slowly across to you. Comment underneath, ask me any questions, but these are the facts. It's, there's, we know for certain you cannot use non-synchronous wind and solar energy to run the grid at all on its own. They can feed it in if the fossil fuel or nuclear is running. They can feed it in. It's highly debatable what contribution it makes. And the proof of that is Germany. Germany had 61,000 megawatts of wind energy. I don't know what solar energy they had. When Putin pulled the plug, their industry crumbled. They went searching for gas, oil and coal all over the world after them spending this trillions of trillions of trillions building this junk. And now they're beginning to see it doesn't work. The whole thing is coming undone. And that is something I could see from the very start. If I could run 
this old farmhouse here on wind energy, I might actually do it. You can't. It can't be done. But it doesn't mean they don't do it. And the recent election proves it gets votes. Now, I know the Greens fell a bit, and I think that I helped to, dis to debunk their absolute lies. But still, um, kind of socialist parties that are for this stuff did do all right. So the, the Green, the loss of votes to the Green didn't come to my side, the Irish Freedom Party or the National Party, really. Didn't really come much. Might a bit to the uh, Independent Ireland. But the problem is, whether I'm right or wrong, the bottom line is, voters will not go with me. And that's what your man says, you lost, get over it. I mean, well, I suppose we did kind of lose maybe in a way. It's very hard to say that and be accurate about it. But that's the reality. How can a whole nation like Ireland not understand that you can't use wind or solar energy without fossil fuel? And I would say 99% believe that you can actually run the whole country without fossil fuel at all. They're importing wood chips from southeastern United States to run the power grid and power it into Limerick, into, I think it's Money Point. Cutting wood down with machinery, all powered by diesel and petrol, and hawking it across the Atlantic, and a burning it, and a shipload hardly does a day. Money Point was burning 5,000 tonnes of coal in one day when it was at its best years ago. And it's still burning something. It mightn't be coal, but it's something. It's gas, or it's something else. Folks, that's a good explanation to you. It's the best I could do. Maybe I'd swing a few of you over. Maybe it'll get round. But there's a co whole cohort of people in Ireland and in the world at large who simply cannot believe that, who simply cannot bring themselves to believe that the whole emperor, his whole suit of clothes, doesn't exist, and he's as naked as a jaybird. Good luck, folks. See you back. Comment underneath. Thank you.